the CD Project uh, Red's bonus system for employees. What do you want to talk about there? So CD Project Red, in the wake of all of their other scandals, whatever you want to call it, with their mandatory crunch, them saying that you know they weren't going to do it and then mandating their devs to do it, work overtime, work six days a week, nights, whatever, um, something we've talked about kind of at nauseum now on our channel. Um, CD Projekt Red instituted or has been using um, this like bonus system where they basically give coins out that have like their logo on it or whatever. Um, they give them to managers to give out to their developers or artists or whoever for doing a really good job. So it's like an incentive system. And that's fine. I get that other workplaces do that, you know, like whether it's through prizes or just like, you know, commendations or whatever it is because i know you said your personal work actually does this too right yeah my place of work um they give out these stickers for you know acknowledging someone's doing a good job or whatever and uh, once you get a certain amount once you get five you get a reward once you get 10 you get a reward 15 every five essentially you'll get like a um apparel item like a special exclusive apparel item mm -hmm. um a little different it's not tied to our bonuses or anything like that but surely you know when it comes time for review my boss could go, Hey, I saw you got, you know, 15 stickers. That means people are acknowledging you. You're doing a great job, but it doesn't, it's not directly tied. No. Right. So, so why I bring it up is exactly that because see, it came out after the game launched that CD project red had these like, you know, little, uh, commendation medals or whatever it is tied to their developers bonuses. That's nah, poop dude. And if the game, there was like different levels of it. So if the game performed well or was reviewed well, then they could cash in these tokens for like bonuses, like financial incentives, basically. This is why this is bad. You're going to alienate some workers for doing basically what they should be doing, right? And it almost incentivizes monetarily people to put in overtime and crunch and work extra days so that they get these little freaking biscuits from their managers so that they are financially incentivized. And this implicitly basically is going to encourage employees to put in extra time on nights, weekends to show that they're working the hardest and compete for basically more, more money. So hold on. So you mentioned something you said, if the game performs well, they can cash right. it. Right. Right. I think that was exclusively tied to it. And this all comes from a Bloomberg article, by the way. Okay. So here's my thing, Josh. It, it came out recently that CD Projekt Red's uh, studio heads came out and they they basically took responsibility in an email and they said, you know, we're sorry. This is all our fault. You know, this isn't this doesn't have anything to do with you guys. The the buggy launch of the game. Yeah, yeah. They basically just apologized and said it's all our fault. You know, mm -hmm. you guys did a great job making this beautiful game. It, it's not your fault. Right. Now, this is what's fucking abysmal, Josh. The game is if if the game is going to suffer financially it's because of the decisions of the executive heads not because right. of the, the the work that the employees have put in right so now because of the the shitty things that the executives have done the regular employees have this bonus that they really doesn't mean shit and it's not their fault the game isn't performing well therefore they're getting fucked you know what i mean right well i mean it's literally not performing well but it got reviewed well it sold 8 million copies and they made a profit on the first day. Yeah. So I guess in the, like uh, critically and in like monetarily, it is doing really well. So how, how do you, what yeah. is like the cutoff there? It's their just stock, like, their stock did go down 25%. After good, later. good. The company deserves to fucking go bankrupt and all those devs should go to other companies that will actually support them and not work for such a shit fucking company run by idiots. I'm with okay. You, brother. Um, and it's just this, it's really abysmal. It's really abysmal. And this company, if they are not held accountable, they're going to continue to make big games like this and basically force their employees to kill themselves and be incentivized monetarily to do so. It yeah. needs to stop. It's bad. So what is Josh, if you could, what is an, like an example of a good studio that does this right? So an art of this and I'm going to reference an article that's actually from last year, um, September of last year. But just to compare, and it, this is a little bit of a smaller studio, but they still make great games. Um, and just their philosophy is so much different to game design, right? We've talked a lot about that there's industry pressure to do crunch, 
to meet these like triple A title deadlines and things like that. Like it's clearly ingrained in the culture and why it's bad and so on and so forth. So to contrast that with a, a company that has it right, in my opinion, super giant games, Brett, and you might know them for games like Bastion, Pyre, Pyre. Yeah, and Transistor. also Transistor and also Hades that just came out. Yep. So super giant games, right? Don't do not mandate their workers to crunch actually allow them flexible work hours because they, some of their, they say some of their employees, you know, are more, um, uh, efficient in the morning. Some are performed better in the evenings exactly. and, they have, and they have an internal, you know, just nature of collaboration of a, you know, you have to work obviously, but work, work when is best for you, you know? And I think in the article too, they touch on like, sometimes we have meetings that everybody has to be to that might be outside of when they would typically work or things like that. But you know, whatever. Anyway, they mandate not their workers to do crunch, Brett, but their workers to take at least 20 days off a year. Now, they can take as many days off a year as they want for various reasons. No questions asked, but they must take 20 days off every year. That's not like a, you know, a suggested thing or whatever. It's like, no, you're working too much. You need some time off. Go take some time off. Please go take care of yourself and your family and go live your life and do not work. Please don't do it. It's really nice. Come on, man. I mean, listen, that's how you breed success, right? right. You want your clearly product. they breed success. Yeah. You want your products to succeed, you know, make your, make your employees happy. Right. Um, you know, they, so they've been building their studio like this and where it comes from. And really why I want to bring this up is the, the, um, studio head who his name, I think is, um, I'm not going to be able to find it now. It's like it's Greg Cassavin or something like that. His last name is Cassavin. He's the head of the studio. He comes from a background in um, working with EA. Okay. And he said that when he joined EA, it was right around the time whatever studio in EA he worked for got in trouble for doing mandatory crunch and mandated overtime and things like that. So he came into this cult, like this cultural shift at EA where they changed that and did things like this, like man, like mandatory time off, like do not work nights and weekends. There's no crunch, like all of that in his studio that he worked for in EA because that was like a company wide thing that EA has done. Mm -hmm. And he said that that was a really great experience. So he brought it to Supergiant when he founded it with his the other guy that founded it, I forget. Um, and just something that they do now in their office because they said it produces better game. It's less stress. It doesn't put brackets on the time that they need to. Now, Supergiant's also lucky. They're not like CD. They don't have deadlines that they have to meet. They're basically an independent studio that is funded by, you know, Epic and some other things that like they have, they just have made very good deals, right? Yeah. With people so that they, so they don't have as much outside influence. And I think regardless, whether you're a AAA studio or a smaller studio like Supergiant, you can bring that mindset to managing your team, right? To the table, regardless of the size. And if you don't, right? By you doing the opposite, as we've seen with Cyberpunk, you're not producing a better end product. And you're putting your workers health at risk you know in the process absolutely thanks for checking out this video did you know it's part of a larger podcast called have to cast we put them out every single week and you can check them out by clicking somewhere above my head